I still feel hurt for Tamaki in this episode. Like, oh, Fire Force episode eight. Like, the ending with Tamaki, I almost. I almost completely lost it. Like, the loyalty and trust that she had for that lieutenant just completely gone in just a few minutes. And to see her crying like that to Shinra after he says if she's okay after Shinra coming in like coming in hot at the end like that was freaking beautifully amazing like I almost stood up when he hit Lieutenant Rika in the face like I thought he's he was gone like he blew up like Shinra ma made him blow up or something but that like when he was like are you are you all right, Tamaki? And then the animation and smoothness of motion of her face. You see all of the emotions coming, like shock and then sad to sad to like tearing up to crying and then starting to go a little bit back around to being relieved that Shinra was there to save her like that was freaking beautiful like I'm still like holding back like my emotions from crying kind of like because that animation when animation gets like that with a character crying and the the animation is so smooth like that I lose it and Oh, but first of all, we find out in the beginning of the episode that the artificial um, infernals and stuff, like the man, -made, the human -made, man made ones that Obi uh, was reading from Hibana's uh, research notes and stuff like that, was that they all have somewhat of they have like insect DNA like inside those infernals and stuff and such. So those infernals are created by adding some sort of like insect DNA into them and such. And like, oh, I, I can't get that Tamaki's face out of my head. Like I wanted to give her the biggest hug, but not like in this episode or whatever, because pretty much Rika, Lieutenant Rika, like broke her back, not broke, completely broke or something, but she was pretty much like immobile. The entire time because he gave her a hug and like pretty much like broke her back or something to where she can't like couldn't move or couldn't fight or anything which that shit was that shit screwed up like lieutenant rika the guy who was behind like those man-made ones and stuff like that first of all i thought that the other lieutenant the guy with the headphones and the sound thing i thought he was going to be the one that that did that but i should have guessed that like they wouldn't do that like so easily or something because uh he's the first one that Shinra and Arthur saw when they were turning the corners and stuff because they had some uh like multiple infernals uh infernal situation that the entire company had to go and fix or whatnot so they went and then Shinra and Arthur are just standing by standing right there and some guy walks out of the of the alley and then they see a hand come out with like some sort of bottle, stick it on that guy, and then that guy turns and in, turned into an inferno or whatever. And then they went to that corner and stuff. And they went out. They they went into the alley, and they ended up seeing Lieutenant Rika and the other guy. I forgot his name, but the guy with the headphones and like this, he's able to do the sound thing, uh, like the the sound uh pyrokinetic ability. Or whatnot, which is just seriously, that's like freaking cool and very intuitive and really awesome. But like Arthur was gonna take them out or whatever, 
and they don't but he didn't but they showed the guy with the headphones first to make us probably think that it was going to be him or something but it turns out it was lieutenant rika and uh, the other lieutenant was f trying to figure out like it is probably him because they like the company one is also trying to figure out who are these like man-made infernals like where are they coming from and stuff so and they found it out that it was one of the uh lieutenants or whatever and just lieutenant rika is the definition of a complete terrorizing psychopath like an absolute psychopath like he puts the bug first of all he even wrote tamaki and bringing kids to like this abandoned warehouse or something and then he was gonna blame tamaki uh like put the crime on her about the infernals and shit like in like the way that he toyed with her emotions she probably even had like a serious crush on him too like uh, like her emotions loyalty and 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 trustworthiness that she had for him to him for him to like do this shit i like when shinra came in hot at the end i was so freaking happy i got up and i was like oh my gosh this is freaking amazing shinra do it destroy his ass and then, even before that, when they got all the kids in there, he uses the bug on on one of the children's one of the children's mom. Like this was a dark ass episode where he used one of the bugs and latched it onto one of the kids' mom. And then the mom turned into an inferno. And then Rika blew up their mom. Like, that kid's mom. Like, all of them were watching this right in front of their eyes. These little children. And Rika saying they're like, I'll sacrifice as many innocent children to bring something about a pilot light or some dumb crap. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then, after this episode, I'm actually starting to think that, is Rika the one that gave Shinra... His abilities, because at like at his house, his mom or his or his brother went up in flames or whatever, but he survived, and the first company captain was there, and was that the start of the man-made infernals or something? And that he did that actually to Shinra back then, and that's why Shinra is kind of like able to like vision like because like whenever he saw um when it would like whenever he sensed something it it looked like there was like a trigger on his legs that he sensed like an infernal ha uh, like appearing or something happened with the bug that turned like the that woman into an infernal and then that kid who almost turned into infernal but like he absorbed the bug and he was able to take it or something like that which was like crazy in itself but then shinra was able to find where they were maybe because of like his ability to sense it and everything like he can actually sense it not like everybody else because maybe he is a man-made like pyrokinetic uh person like that could be it and then uh like tamaki even having her back pretty much broken and being beaten up by rika using her ability to send some sort of signal with her flares or her two red tails and shit like that was amazing like and shinra saw it and like he came in hot and rescued her and stuff this episode it was so dark and animation is was amazing at the end coming in hot and everything and it was really good like honestly really great and like i need to clap for this shit because that shit was crazy i don't think rick is done yet uh because i probably next episode there's gonna be a really good fight between shinra and him and then like you know the captain of the first company is gonna come in hot with his other lieutenants maybe to take rika out or something really cool but what did you guys think about this episode like i almost lost it at the end with 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 tamaki i almost did but 
Um, what did you guys think? Did you guys almost lose it at the end? Leave down in the comments your thoughts about what I said, your thoughts about the episode. And like this video if you did. Like this video if you liked anything I had to say. Like the video if you liked the episode. And subscribe to the channel for more reviews, vlogs, unboxings, live reactions, and different discussion videos, and things like that. So, gentlemen, stay classy, ladies, stay sassy. But most important, everybody, you gotta stay a little nasty, alright? So, peace and love. And I'll see y'all later in the next video. Peace out. May the force be with you always. And plus, ultra.